So, before we get started today, first thing I wanted to do is say thank you very much to the person that sent me this mat. I now have a new mat from my desk. I unfortunately forget the person's name and the little piece of paper that came with it is long gone in the mess that is this store. But I just wanted to make sure that you knew that I got it and say thank you. So, okay, the news. So a few pieces of news here. The first piece of news is that I have a permit here, not a permit, an application for a permit so that I can do a live stream outside of the Apple Store. I'd like to do a live stream outside of the Apple Store where we go over customer devices and see what they told the customer versus what's actually going on with the device. We'll open them. I'll have my microscope camera there. I'll have this camera there. We'll have Hi Hi there. We may even have a booth, babe, where a sign, something that says, oh, by the way, th who got this? What is that? Please help. <laughs> right, please help. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to be, so what the idea is that I want to have somebody wearing a sign, something that says something like, you know, told your data was gone, get a second opinion. Or, you know, uh, quoted $800 or quoted $1,000, second opinion with an arrow. And I was thinking of having a booth paper <coughs> brand ambassador there that wears the sign. Somebody that, you know, may look in a manner where people may be inclined to read what's on the, on the sign even if they're not exactly interested, so that they walk over. And this is starting. This is beginning. So this here is my application. I don't, again, I don't have a permit yet, but I am working on it. I just wanted to let you all know that. And we also have a, you're not, yeah, you need a permit for a generator, but I don't need a generator. I'm looking at an inverter. So I'd like to actually power the entire station off of my bike battery. So my bike battery can put out lots of power, sometimes more than that peak, it, my, ba my bike can put out, I'm going to get myself a 48 volt to 120 volt inverter that I put under the camera box so that I can power my laptop, uh, the camcorder. Yeah, so I'll be able to power my quick, my, hot, my uh, soldering station, and my power supply, and also the microscope camera. So we're going to bring all of that there so that we can film, and I should be able to power it off my bike battery. I actually have two of those bike batteries, so if one of them dies, I'll have a backup, and when one of them dies, I'm going to have somebody trek it over to the store to charge it and then bring it back. So this is, this is going to be fun, but this is, this is going down, and I am incredibly excited. See this? Dead MacBook. So let's get started, open it up, and see what's going on with this MacBook, and see if we can make it work again. All right, so let's see what's going on here. So I just need to turn on my power supply software. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into a power supply that I have here. So I'm not using a standard MagSafe. This is a Circuit Specialist CSI 3005. There should be a link in the description below where you could buy it on their website. And I'm going to power that on. And you, I'm, well, first thing I want to do is I want to see how much power the board is taking itself. And that's why I try to plug it into a power supply rather than something else. Now, as you can see here, it's taking 200 milliamps. And 200 milliamps actually does tell me something. So typically, if it's taking 20 to 30 milliamps, I'm missing PM sleep S4L. It's not going to an S4 and S3 state. If it's taking 500 milliamps, it's turning on. Now, the reason that I'm interested in the amount of power that the board is drawing, the amount of amperage it's drawing, is because different amperage draws mean different things. And so what this does is the moment I plug it in, before I've done anything, I can get an idea of what is wrong with the board in my head. So every time I solve a board, let's say it takes me 20 or 30 or 50 minutes to fix a board, once I know what the problem was, once I locate it, then I tie that in my head in a little spreadsheet that exists in my mind to the problem that I, I tie the problem that there was to the amount of amperage it was drawing at the beginning. And it, it's like pattern detection. It doesn't mean that I know exactly what's wrong every time, but it gives me an idea where to look. So 200 milliamps is going to mean either A, PP bus G3 hot is being created but short as a ground, or B, also as power good is missing. So let's see what's true in this case. Now this that we have over here is starting to become a relic. This is an 820-3437 board. This is getting old. This is a Haswell-based machine. I was five years into my business when Apple started using Haswell boards. That's how old I am. I, that, I'm really showing my age. I was five, I had been doing this already as a business for five years at the time that Haswell boards started getting used in Apple products. Back in my day. Anyway, so let's, so the first thing that I said is usually PP Bush G3 Hot will be short as a ground. That's what I've learned in older videos. So let's see what PP Bush G3 Hot shows on this board. So PP Bush G3 Hot can be found on F7140 right over here. So we're going to measure that on this meter that I've got here. 8.59 volts, not short as a ground. The next thing we're going to do, wonder if it's going to be something by the Alsus Power Goods circuit. So let's see what we got here. 
This is a really nice lens that I got here. I finally upgraded myself a few months ago to a lens that can do up to 135 millimeter. It's pretty cool. Have you read your Wikipedia page? No, if I did, I'd probably get depressed. So I haven't. So I want you all to look at this and tell me if you can see or get an idea of what's wrong with it while I eat my food, because my food just arrived and I'm kind of hungry. By the way, I'm going to be getting those microscopes very soon. They're going to be up on the website for pre-order. Unfortunately, the shipping, shipping costs for 40 to 50 pounds of stuff I slightly underestimated, so I may not be able to make them cheaper than Amazon. It may wind up costing a little more, but I'm going to have some microscopes with this nice top piece. So see how this top piece is over here? See how there's, like on the left of the image, or on the right of the image, no matter where you go, there, it's in focus for just about the entire thing. So if I get this in focus nice there, uh, this chip is in focus to my left, this chip is in focus to my right, this is in focus on top. The focus doesn't change regardless of where I am, and you also don't have that thing where you see little rainbows shooting out of everything. I don't know if it's called uh, vignetting or chromatic aberrations, whatever. I'm not a photographer, but I know that the microscopes that I was getting, the, the old ones that I had that did not use this, that didn't fit this, the new ones they don't ha that don't have this tube look pretty bad by contrast to these. So I'm going to be selling some very shortly, so be on the lookout for a pre-order option for that since I expect them to be arriving at the port very soon. Now, let's take a look here. So this, see what this resistor is for. R8158. So what do you do? All right, so here we have a transistor that's going to be responsible for, hey, what do you know? All says power good. Well, imagine that. So let's check this out. So we have all says power good here. And it is going to be if PP5VSO, PP3V3SO, and PP1V5SO are present, then this is not going to pull all says power good to ground. But if one of those is not pr present because R8158 is broken, then all says power good will be pulled to ground. So let's take a look and see how this is going. And let's see if all says power good is actually present on our board. And then test our theory here. So I can measure all says power good right there. And that's exactly what I am going to do. Oh, this power good is 0 0.01 volts. No good. So I'm going to turn on my fume extractor, which everybody getting started should have one of these. Also, if you're working at a place where they're too cheap to pay for a fume extractor, you should just stop showing up to work. I know it's a bit of a strong opinion, but if your boss is making money off of your labor and they're asking you to work in an environment where you're inhaling solder fumes, that's something that I really frown upon. You know, when people say, it's one, by all means, you know, tor torture your staff. You know, you torture your staff as much as you torture yourself. But don't ask people to ruin their health on your account so that they can save a little bit of money. That is, that's, that's cool. So we are going to change this resistor over here. Now this soldering iron is cool because it has, uh, this soldering tip is cool because it has a ball, it's this kind of, well not a ball, it has, it's hollowed out in there so I can just put a bunch of solder there and just ha float that solder over the component and then kind of just take it off without having to use the hot air. Like so. Beautiful. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit more, it's going to get that in focus for you. Alright, so the top pad is there. The bottom pad may require some mild scraping to get that to show again. You don't want to scrape too hard, because if you scrape too hard, that's all coming off the board, as is the piece of copper it's attached to. But you don't want to scrape too little, because I don't want to be soldering on top of corrosion. Right. I would normally use my tweezers, but my hot tweezers sound like this.
Everybody loves the Hakko song. First thing we're going to do here, turn off that loud, nasty fume extractor. Make sure the multimeter shows up back on the screen. And plug this in. And as you can see, we're taking 700 milliamps. So I can imagine that all this power good is present. And it's all this power good over here, giving us a nice 3 volts. This is the 3437, so like the 3435, before it, it's going to turn on, off, on, off, on, off, on. And as you can see right now, it's on because the fan is spinning. But there's one last piece that we missed over while taking a look at this motherboard. There's one thing that we are missing here. There's one little piece that may just need a little bit of adjustment. Animals! <laughs> You want to talk about poison? <laughs> I am poison! So that's it for today. So we were missing all this power good due to a corroded resistor right by the transistor that will pull it to ground if all the power rails are not present. The way it tells if those power rails are present are by resistors between that power rail and the transistor, and if they're all not there, the transistor will send all this power good straight to ground, which is what it was doing, which is why we're stuck at 200 milliamps. And why that what happened there is every single rail was turning on besides CPU V core because CPU V core will not turn on until all this power good is present. All this power good not present, no CPU V core. So that 500 milliamps that you see the machine taking is different from the 200 milliamps it's taking without all this power good because that 300 milliamps is being used for the CPU. So when the thing is first starting on, and, uh, starting up and booting up, let's see, if we do 18 volts, 30% of that. So this the system is using around 6 watts for the CPU. Pretty efficient. Uh, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Excellent at data recovery, not the best camera. What happened, Steve? Dude, you lost your MacBook box right on my fucking stomach. Oh. What do you think is gonna happen if you're standing there? It's a but you didn't run through it, you went through it and pushed through it. Jesus.